10 ways to save money on a cruise. Really? Just the facts with Larry. Coming up. Stay tuned. Hi, Larry. Welcome back to RTE Travel Talk. Just the facts. Hi, Ken. It's great to be back with you. Oh, fantastic. So today, you know, I thought you and I could tackle the facts around how to save money in a cruise. Now, you and I both know there's literally hundreds of travel pundits out there with their own view of this, talk, talking up the same thing. Save money in the next cruise, five secret deals, yada, yada, yada. And I happen to know that you've actually got your own list as well. So I kind of thought what I'd like to do today is let's have a look at your top 10 list. Okay. And I'm going to kind of play devil's advocate or the, the role of a first-time cruiser, and uh, we'll drill into it a little bit. How's that sound? Sounds great. Hey, Ken, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, sure. How many times have you been on a cruise and you go down to dinner and there's like uh, maybe four or six or eight people at the table? And after a few minutes, maybe the next evening, the talk gets around to how much did you pay for this cruise? And then all of a sudden, everybody starts comparing. And it's, I think, in uh, America and Canada, it's almost a sport to see who can get the lowest price on a cruise. They don't really care what the cruise does, but I got the lowest price. And that's, it seems to be a sport, you know. I can't tell you the number of times that I've sat, or sat around a table with with people and that's exactly the topic of conversation what we ought to do today is let's yeah. take the sport out of it and put the science into what's going on with uh with getting the best cruise price you can get yeah that sounds like a plan to me okay so i'm looking at the list that you sent over and the number one thing that you've got on this list is book early so my question is why would i want to book early when i can probably hold it for a last minute deal and what happens and what happens if the price goes down? Great questions. And so, Ken, I think what we need to do is uh, back to the science. Let's look at how the cruise lines book cruises. Okay. Uh, sure. Let's say, uh, we're looking at cruises in 2026. We did we release what we call the deployment in the business, and that's going to be the schedule of cruises that are going to happen in 2026. You're the cruise line. You put this out and you look at, well, how did this cruise sell, sail in the past? How did we do as far as booking cabins? What were the pricing? And then we guess what this cruise is going to do two years from now, and that's the price we put out there when we put it out on the deployment. Right. Then people start looking at it, they start booking it, and they start going along. And as they do, the cabins start to fill up. Let's say it does very well. 50% of the ship sells out the first month or so. The cruise line goes, well, you know, maybe we underpriced this a little bit. Let's start raising the pricing as we go along to fill up the remaining cabins because we've already got half the ship sold. Yep. So that's pretty much the way the pricing works. And that's why the best pricing you have generally uh, unless it's a really bad sailing that's not doing very well. But for the most part, the best prices you see are the day they release the deployment because that's their best guess is what the price is going to be uh, two years from now. Right on. So so this business of a last minute deals is, is really just kind of a myth in this day and age now, right? Well, the other thing is that, yeah, you get the last minute deals, but they're the, the worst cabins. I mean, I always equate it to back when we had the Kmart things at the front of the store where they were selling them, they were cheap, but they were the yeah. leftover junk that nobody else wanted. Well, that's kind of what happens with cabins also, especially if you're family cruising and you want to get, you know, three balconies together with two across the hall for the kids. That's where you really got to book early and you're going to get the best pricing but you also get the cabin right on so so then if people do see this last minute stuff mm -hmm. you're really getting the dregs of what's of it what's just left on the ship that's yeah. basically it Ken. and and then the other question you asked me is what happens if the price goes down well yeah at least a cruise holidays of Vera, we have a price guarantee that uh, once you book a cruise if the price goes down between the time you book it and the final payment date we will lower the price and uh, pass that on to you and what a lot of people don't realize we're doing is we're cutting our uh, paycheck uh, because we're reducing our commissions by doing that. But yeah. that's the uh, guarantee we make to you because we feel it's very important for you to get the very best price and you need to book early to get that very best price. Exactly. Exactly. The next on, the, on our list, Larry, is you say use a cabin guarantee. What's mm -hmm. that all about? Well, a cabin guarantee is when you book a cabin uh category but you don't know the exact stateroom number that you're going to have and if you're traveling just the 
the two of you or the four of you in one cabin and it's not important to you where you are on the ship but you do want you want to make sure you have a balcony unobstructed so you select that category the cruise lines will offer you a discount to not select that stateroom because that gives them the flexibility to be able to book the cruise as we go along uh, to move to upgrade people, to sell higher cabins. And, and in order to get that privilege of being able to do that, the cruise lines will give you a discount. They will also guarantee that, that you get that category cabin or better. So often, if your category sells out, they will upgrade you to the next level category. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, it's not they're not going to take you from a balcony to the penthouse. Uh, and, <laughs> and most cabin categories, as you know, on the ship are based upon location. And that's another thing that... I, People say, well, I want this cabin right here, and I can show you a deck plan for some of the cruise lines where the cabin next to it is another category. It's going to cost $40 more per person, and there's not eight inches of difference on the ship's location. So a lot of times the pricing on the categories, uh, and that's what we're talking about here, is the ability to get a category at a lower price than you could get if you pick the stateroom. And you'll see there's very little difference in the location on the ship as far as the categories are concerned. Yeah. But you can save a significant amount of money. In other words, if I understood you correctly, the cruise lines are offering a discount for the ability to be able to fill a ship better as, as, as they go along. And Yeah, it well, gives them the flexibility to yeah. determine which categories and the pricing on those categories. Yeah. And, and, and they're willing to, to work with you. Yeah. And, and if the category fills up, we, we often see upgrades on the, on the uh, guarantees. Yeah. But it's just, a, again, if you don't really care where you are on the ship, and you're not yeah. going to be vastly different. It's not, they're not going to take you from uh, the third deck up to the 14th deck or something right. like that. Yeah. You, you know, and they're not going to put you in the engine room or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. And most of our modern ships are, uh, we talk about obstructed cabins, and most of them don't have obstructed cabins anymore because they position the lifeboats in a place on the ship that, that, that they're not obstructed. One comment that we got was, I don't want to take a guarantee because all you're going to get is the leftovers, but that really isn't the case. No, because you're getting that category. Uh, yeah. Whatever you booked, if you booked a Delta Delta or Bravo Charlie, you're getting yeah. that. You're not going to get a lesser category, and you may yeah. get a better category. So, no, you're not getting the leftovers. You're getting the cabin you selected. Oh, fantastic. So the next one is kind of obvious. Use a cruise travel agent. agent. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Fill me in. <laughs> you know why it's not obvious, Ken? One of the reasons is pe because people think we charge more, uh, and that's that's they they automatically rule us out as a way to save money because right. they assume that we do we charge more. And so the the first thing I tell people when whenever you're doing anything, ask how the person's getting paid. And if you understand that travel agents are getting commissions from the cruise lines, and that uh, if you book directly with the cruise lines, you're still paying those commissions. The cruise lines just keeping them. So I tell people if you're going to do that buy shares of stock in the cruise line because you're adding to the profitability and you're not getting the service that you get from a travel agent now why is that service important for saving money we can prevent you from making mistakes one two uh and i'll give you a lot of examples i had a uh I heard the story or this person told me the story of a family that showed up out at port canaveral to board a disney cruise right. with a cabin for four people but they had five people one of which was an infant that was six months old well they figured anyone because the airlines don't charge then the cruise lines probably don't charge well they didn't get to go on the cruise and they lost all their money another one as people come to me and say boy i went on this cruise line and it was horrible and uh you know i i just my whole vacation was ruined well, they lost money because they got the cruise that they didn't want. Whereas if they go into a travel agent, we had profiled them. We probably would say, you don't really want to go on this, that cruise because I don't think you're going to enjoy it. So why waste your money if you're not going to enjoy it? So we can prevent you from making mistakes. And two, and we have software and programs we can search the whole world uh, of cruising to find you the best pricing whether it's uh, the same cruise on a different date or a different cruise line going to the same destination all of those things we can do for you and basically at no additional charge so it's saving you money right there now i know i'm going to hear from the diy crowd out there that are always going to say travel agents either charge for their services Right. or they can get it cheaper by booking direct. So what's up with that? They cannot because we, when I go to, let's say Royal Caribbean to book a cruise, I'm, when I look at my computer, I'm seeing the same screen that the person on the other end of the 800 number is seeing. Uh, we have exactly the same pricing. We don't charge a fee. There are some travel agents that charge a fee, but that's generally fees for 
things like air or hotels and right. add-ons and those kinds of things. But the basic cruise, most of us are not charging for that, for booking that. That's fine. If you're a DIY guy and you like to do your own hotels and air and all that stuff, I think you might. And you don't want to pay that fee. Have at it. And, and it's great. You can probably do a great job because you got more time to spend doing it than I do. But when it comes to cruising, I, I guarantee you, I will get you the best price, much better probably than you're going to find on your own. And the other thing that you didn't touch on is with your consortia that you invo you're involved with is they have blocks of space, mm -hmm. which was purchased at a lower price point. So you can quite often find space out there for your clients at a lesser price, right? And we, can, we uh, in our consortium, we get amenities, for instance, on many Oceana cruises, not all of them, but many of them, if you book with a travel leader's travel agent, your gratuities are included. We, we, we pay your gratuities for you. So we have a little amenities like that with the different cruise lines uh, yeah. that uh, you can't get on your own. So next on our list is you've got get all your discounts. What's up with that? Well, I had a lady a few years ago and um, she was a very loyal customer of a cruise line. And she called every year and booked her cruise and, and just, I don't, I'm not quite sure why she called us, but she said, well, I'll give this travel agent a, a try. And so she called us. And so I'm going over her, her booking and my quote. And I said, well, here's your loyalty discount. And she says, well, what's a loyalty discount? And uh, I said, well, because you've been going with this cruise line for so many years, they're going to give you a discount. She said, I never knew that. And she had been eligible for this discount for years, but nobody ever told her that at the cruise line. We can ask you questions about things that you might never have thought about, which they do give discounts for. So that's why we do a profile to ask you all these different things to see if you're eligible. Cruise line's probably not going to ask you. Many of them will, but some of them won't even ask you if you're eligible for these discounts or tell you that they're available. So again, that com comes down to the conversation you're having with a potential guest prior to actually doing the research for the particular itinerary then, I guess. Yeah, because what we do is we, we call it a profile, but we try to find out as much information about you. And one of the things we do is go over the different types of uh, discounts, whether it's military, uh, yeah. where you live, have you sailed before, all kinds of different discounts that you might not even be aware exist. And we ask you questions so that we can fit you into that discount if it's available. Right. And then the the call centers for the major cruise lines, they're just not going to have the time to, to look for these extra discounts. Right. Yeah. And while we're talking about that, Princess offers a military discount on every cruise. And they have a really good program where once you register that and send in your uh, forms that prove that you're a veteran, yeah. then they keep that on file and they apply it to every cruise. Not every Ooh, cruise. Nice. Princess does a really good job of that. So. Yeah. And they've been doing that for years. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. I really give them kudos for that. Right. Yeah. Now, the next thing you've got is you say book on board and visit the future cruise desk. Now, Larry, I'm on vacation. I don't really have, want to take waste my time going to a future cru cruise desk. Is it really worthwhile? Yeah, for, for a couple of reasons, Ken. One, they, they will give you a onboard credit for either the cruise you're on or the one you're going to be booking. If you don't want to take the time and you don't have a specific cruise in mind, they have future cruise certificates that are open-ended for generally give you about a okay. year or so to book the cruise. So you can... You can go purchase one of those certificates, come home, talk to your travel advisor and decide where, what cruise you really want to apply that to. The second with onboard booking that is a real advantage, I think, is these folks only deal with one cruise line and they know their ships and their cruise line backwards and forwards because that's all they do. I represent 28 different cruise lines and it, you know, it's a challenge to keep up with everything and we do. But uh, this last cruise we were on, one of the Beyond Celebrity, we had a couple that wanted to go to Galapagos and they had a lot of very uh, technical, detailed questions that I could answer, but it was going to take quite a bit of research. They went down to the future cruise desk and in a half an hour, they had all their questions answered and they were able to book uh, a Galapagos cruise because there's a lot of things involved in that. And it's, it's totally different from just your normal cruise. So two advantages. Uh, one is they're going to give you a discount or an onboard credit. Two, if you've got really technical, you really want to get in-depth knowledge about the cruise, those are the folks to see. So I think I just heard something there that's interesting. The people that are manning the future cruise desks on these ships aren't your average person that you would run into if you actually called their call center. These people have a lot more training and are able to provide a lot more information. Yeah. When I'm on a cruise, I go down and talk to them because yeah. I find out things from them that uh, they are really, really good. 
And, yeah. that, and that's across the board, every cruise line I, that I've ever dealt with these folks. They are really, really good. So if you like the cruise you're on and you want to stay with them, it's worth, it is worth the, the trip. Yeah, I think so. And it's become a lot more convenient to be able to talk to these folks. But I'm loyal to my travel advisor. Uh, am I not cutting you out of the mix by doing that? No, that's the beauty that we love about it. As soon as you make that booking, they send us an email and tell us you've made the booking. Uh, we put it in our files when we call you when you come home. That's the first thing we do is tell you we got the booking uh, or we got the certificate. Uh, do you want to come in and we'll talk about how to apply it? So, yeah, your travel agent's right there with you all the way. And uh, we appreciate that loyalty. Fantastic. All right. So I'm looking at the next one here. And, and I got to tell you, Larry, you got me scratching my head. How does how does buying travel insurance save you money? Well, it's it's an investment that you're making beginning at between 90, well, some cruise lines between 120 and 90 days. It, the Whatever you paid for that cruise is no longer fully refundable. So right. if an unforeseen event happens and you didn't buy insurance, you've lost money. So by buying insurance, I've saved you money because now we can file a claim and get, your, uh, get the payment back that you made to the cruise line for whatever they're not going to reimburse you for. Buying tra travel insurance with a travel advisor is also important because we can compare our independent travel companies with the cruise line's insurance itself. The coverages, the price, the caveats, the things that they don't cover. When you talk to the cruise line uh, call center about their insurance, that's the only pro product they know. They only know their particular insurance product, whereas we can compare them. And we often find, and I'm, I'm really sticking my neck out here, but right now, about 90% of the time, our independent travel insurance is less expensive than what the cruise lines are offering. And often the cruise lines are really not offering an insurance policy. They're offering a contract that agrees to pay you back money, but it's not really an insurance policy. And finally, uh, we save you money because of the claims process. The insurance companies we use tend to pay their claims. I know that sounds facetious, but it's not a struggle. We're not having to fight them every tooth and nail to get your money back for you, whereas that often happens with some of the other travel insurance companies. Interesting. Interesting. Book the shoulder seasons and yeah. book in, and book her, hurricane season. Well, it's not just hurricane season. Yeah. Alaska has a shoulder season. As you know, our season in Alaska runs from the second week roughly in May. They keep moving that up to uh, roughly the second week in September. Peak season is June and July when the kids are out of school. So we yeah. consider the shoulder season to be the May and September timeframes. And it's generally less expensive. The cruises are less expensive during that time frame. And of course, the question I always get is, isn't it really cold in May and September? And not so much anymore. The weather up there, once we get past April, is pretty much the same. They don't have a lot of snow in Alaska, at least the part portions where we cruise. So the weather's not really a factor. But if you are retired and you really are not tied to a certain schedule, booking during the shoulder season can be uh, very much more affordable. And also the airlines tend to be less expensive during those time frames. That's Alaska. The Caribbean, the shoulder season, the, our high season again is June and July. And then our sh shoulder season, I consider our shoulder season to be uh, basically after Thanksgiving and before spring break in the in middle of March, uh, excluding Christmas. So if you look at the end of November through the about the second week in March, Right. That's what I consider to be our Caribbean shoulder season. And of course, our hurricane season ends at the end of November. So, But there's something I wanted to ask you about hurricane season, Larry. You've been on hundreds of cruises. And yes. How many times has your cruise been diverted due to bad weather? <sighs> Maybe once or twice. And you asked me the question, what about booking during hurricane season? The yep. one thing I will tell you is that the cruise ships go where the hurricanes are not. And that's that again, sounds facetious, but it's, it's the difference of between that and going to a Mexican resort during hurricane season and then you get evacuated from your hotel and you get to go to a Mexican high school and uh, <laughs> yeah. have a Mexican buffet for three or four days with no electricity whereas you're on a cruise ship and you were supposed to go to let's say Cozumel and you wind up going over to Nassau instead but you still have electricity and all the amenities and great food and everything else so and the cruise ships 
stay well away from the hurricanes. And uh, so it's not really. Now, your five-day cruise might become a seven-day cruise. Uh, your your four-day cruise might become a two-day cruise. You may cruise out of Port Canaveral and come back to Fort Lauderdale and get bus back up to Port Canaveral. So all of those things are, are a risk. And if, if that doesn't appeal to you, I, I don't know. I kind of like the uh, adventure of it. <laughs> so. Yeah, but the, thing, but the thing of it is, when it comes to that, just as you said, you can't pick a resort up and move it if it's in the way of a hurricane. Right. A ship can go anywhere it wants to get out of the way, yeah. and they do that. Yeah, in September, October, pricing is is very good. I mean, outside the holidays, uh, yeah. except for Halloween, and Halloween now has become a huge cruise deal. <laughs> oh, really? So- yeah, the Halloween prices are. Disney even does a special themed cruise just around Halloween now. Fantastic. Become a shareholder. How does that save us money, Larry? Well, we have four major companies that sell their stock publicly that own right. cruises. Okay. So Carnival Corporation, obviously the largest one, but that encompasses Holland America, Princess, Cunard, uh, Seaborn. So any of those cruise lines fall under their umbrella. Then there's Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, which Celebrity, Royal Caribbean, and Silver Sea fall under their umbrella. There's Norwegian Cruise Lines Holdings, which uh, fall under NCL, Region 7 Seas, and Oceana. And just uh, yesterday, Viking is now a publicly traded company. So often, uh, if you buy 100 shares of those companies, they will give you either an onboard credit or a discount for, for booking a cruise. So would that be like an ongoing discount, Larry? Or is it yeah, just uh-huh. one? Yeah, yeah. It's, really? and, and each each cruise line is different yeah. as far as how much they give you. Some do it on seven days. They give you a certain amount. On 10 days, they give you a certain yeah. amount. 10 day cruises. The the one little downside to this is some of the cruise lines will not give you the discount if you're already getting a discount for something else. And as you know, right now we're seeing a discount on just about every booking. I mean, everybody's offering a discount. So, But again, that comes back to the fact that if you're having a conversation with a potential guest, you know, yeah. do you happen to hold, hold stock in this company? Right. Yeah, and that's exactly. just another, another one of the discount avenues that you can go down right. to find the best value for your client. Wine, soda cards, and beverage packages. Depends on how much you drink. (laughs) (laughs) And a lot of the cruise lines now are including these things in the cruise fare. So, and I guess my best advice is if, if, if you're first time cruiser or you haven't cruised that much and it's not included in one of the fares, what you might want to consider doing is get on on board, spend the first day drinking how you think you're going to do on the cruise and then look at that pricing and then go down and talk to the bartenders about being able to buy a beverage package for the remainder of the cruise. And, and, and they're very good. The bartenders will tell you, and say, okay, this is what I did the first day. You know, is it really worthwhile for me to have the beverage package? I mean, if you're having one glass of wine and and maybe a beer, that's one thing. If you're getting specialty coffees, uh, you're getting bottled water and sodas three times and a glass of wine and a beer, that's another thing. Or you're having a martini and you're having a chocolate. All of those things are going to be variable. So you might want to just go on board, see how it's going, see what the pricing looks like, and then decide whether you want to purchase it. One other thing about the beverage packages, a lot of the cruise lines are now offering discounts if you buy them before you get on board. So that kind of takes away that portion of it. But if, if, you're, if you're up in the air, just go see what it looks like and then decide whether to buy the package. The other thing you probably want to bear in mind as well, because you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, most of these beverage packages, you have to buy it for two people. That's correct. So, like, for example, I like to drink quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deb doesn't. Right. You know, in that case, you, it may be just you you kind of pay as you go, right? That that That's one consideration. Some cruise lines are now letting us buy the beverage package and the alcohol package. So, again, there, there, there's a lot of variables as far as these packages are concerned. Right. The, the other thing is to consider what kind of um, drinks you like. I mean, if you've got a particular type of alcohol, gin, let's say, let's say you like Hendrix, those are generally not included in the beverage packages unless you upgrade them. So that, that's another factor. You need to look at what's in that basic package package versus what's in the upgraded package to decide whether you're going to do that or not. And, and again, right. all all that can happen on board. Right. And then there's another good way to solve that. And that's just go on Silver Sea or Regent and then it's all included. And you don't have then to you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, we've got consider private shore excursions. Yeah, I think this is a really individual decision. So how does this work? Well, you you know, you, you when you when you book, then you you get you get to go to the cruise lines 
daily planner and they've got all their sure excursions listed there and the pricing is there. We have vendors that most travel advisors offer, such as shore excursions group, uh, tours by uh, locals, those kinds of places that will do excursions for you and they were are generally less expensive than what the cruise lines offer however a few caveats when you're doing these tours you're generally not meeting in the theater of the cruise line getting together in a group and then marching out to get onto the bus that's sitting there on the pier right. you often have to go outside of the gate of the pier find your tour guide uh, and then their bus might be several blocks away because they can't park at the pier so you have to be aware of that people worry about getting back to the ship on time honestly in 21 years of doing this we've never had anybody miss the ship from that booked on an independent shore excursion vendor that we have the vendors guarantee that they will get you back to the ship if they don't they will get you to the next port of call if you have uh, travel guard insurance which is what we recommend and you miss something goes wrong they will pay and pick up all the costs to get you to the next port of call so those cover that again this is an individual thing if you want the convenience and the kind of peace of mind of booking with the cruise line and everything's all right there together or if you're a little bit more adventurous and you want to get out on your own uh, one other advantage to the independent vendors a lot of times especially if you're doing private excursions you get to dictate what's going to happen on the excursion so you can modify it and move it move it around as you go along now just to talk a little bit more about that we've seen all kinds of videos online of what they people call pier runners chasing ch running down the pier as the ship's sailing away right the people running down the piers are the ones over at Senior Froggies, you know, getting tequila poured down their throat. That's why they're running down the pier because they yeah. Just, uh, so, they, so a lot of these pier runners are not people that are on shore excursions. They're no, people that no, went out on their own and 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 forgot the time. Well, or there's another thing. A lot of, sometimes the ship doesn't change ship time to go match the local time, and you can be with your watch is on ship time, and the local time is different. So you kind of have to be aware of that too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I have this problem with people that get on cruises and disconnect their minds. I mean, you still have to think while you're on a cruise. I mean, I want you to enjoy yourself and relax and forget about the world, but you got to pay attention. So. Yeah. Well, Larry, this is absolutely super information. You shed a, shed a lot of light on some of the topic our viewers, our viewers and listeners are, are looking to find out about. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, I, I guess the, I, the bottom line with this whole thing of all of these things that we talked about, I think when you go with a travel advisor, these things are second nature to them. And they're yeah. going to uh, they're going to be able to provide these savings to you just by osmosis almost uh, because that's that's what we do. And it's the world we live in and, so, and it's our job. And, and I, I'm going to tell you, I think 95, 99% of travel advisors want to make sure that you have the best, least expensive vacation that fits your your needs because they want you to come back and they've got a vested interest in that vacation. When you call that call center, that person, you're just uh, another credit card number as far as they're concerned. But yeah. uh, that travel advisor is has a very vested interest in your vacation. They're right there alongside you. Fantastic. So Larry, if people wanted to reach out to you about booking a cruise vacation, what's the best way to do that? That uh, email there on the bottom of the screen uh, is the best way because we're, we're watching that pretty much 24-7. And, and what I like to do is if you'll just drop us an email and say, hey, we'd like to book a cruise to, I don't know, where, uh, Antarctica in August of 2025. And then what I'll do is I'll set up, I'll, I'll email you back because I don't know what time zone you're in and we'll set up a yeah. time for me to call you. And then we'll just, um, we'll, we'll talk and see if, if it's a fit for us. And then we'll go from there and uh, hopefully get you on board the ship super larry i will leave those links in the description for those that might like to reach out but just before we go what's next on deck for just the facts with larry well ken i thought we'd look at uh going to hawaii uh okay. either on a, on a cruise ship which is totally different than flying as you may have noticed we uh, lived in Hawaii for 26 years, and we uh, were experts on that part of the world. So let's take a look at what's what, how to cruise to Hawaii the best ways. Super. I look forward to it. And as always, I'm going to have a ton of questions ready. <laughs> so with that, my friend, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy travels on all your future great adventures, cruises, and destinations. May the wind always be at your back, and I hope to see you on a Lido deck sometime soon. Me too, Ken. I hope to see you guys too. Thanks so much. Take care. All right. 
And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Larry Jackson of Cruise Holidays of Vieira. If you'd like to reach Larry, I will leave his contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach out to us with a suggestion for a future video or a question, you can simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, share, and ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels. <laughs>